Welcome back to another personal Q&A. My name is Amy if you're new here and on this channel we're all about making the savviest and stylish decisions around luxury fashion. It has been a long time since I've done one of these because ever since I started my luxury live show with my partner Kat L. I'm sure you've known about this. If not, join us every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific time. So before we get started with all the questions, I just want to shout out to Pay. She owns her own Etsy shop, which is called Candith, and she makes these beautiful custom tailored pieces all made of natural linen or cotton material. She is based in Thailand and I am so so impressed by the quality. So I am wearing this little tank top here which is cropped and also the matching skirt. What I really love about this piece is that it's elasticated in the back as well so whenever you expand or eat or sit down you're not gonna be all scrunched up here especially with linen being a fabric that doesn't really stretch. I mean it has a bit of stretch but not really uh, and also the fact that it fits so so well to my exact measurements because I already told you guys um, I'm thin but I do have more of a straight rectangle body type so I don't really have a lot of waist to hip racial like it doesn't exist basically mauve pink color it just is so pretty for summer and even for fall I feel like it's such a beautiful sort of uh, neutral that is so suitable for all skin tones I've also gotten this beautiful linen short how the shorts look on me look how cute it just flares up because like I said they are tailored to my body type otherwise usually shorts um, the A-line ones are pretty hard for me to find because they just don't fit my shorter torso and also like you know waist to hip ratio. I also did want to show you that the skirt itself is lined and these beautiful linen trousers in the cream color which are really really beautiful flowy and super comfortable especially during the cooler summer days. Not only is the fabric super soft for a linen because it is very hard to find really good linen pieces and usually linen is a material where it creases more easily but I do love the look and the feel of linen so anything in the high street is usually not good quality enough but these pieces are beautiful, they're crafted, they're handmade, they're tailored to your own body measurements. Thank you again so much Pei for sending these to me, I love them. So I'm gonna be linking it down below if you're interested Interested, check out Pei's Etsy shop. She has quite a few beautiful pieces. I even saw a coat that was really nice. Uh, she has different kinds of trousers, crop ones, flowy ones. I guess this will be an OOTD. So this gold plated ring that just matches so well with my bracelet. This you've seen a million times, one of my favorite bracelet as well. Uh, these two are from Julia, so I'll link it down below as well if you're interested. All right, let's get started with our question. So I asked you on Instagram stories, Ask me anything and I'll answer it in a Q&A video. The first question is by Fashma. What are some of the brands that you used to adore but totally fall out of love now? If you watch my channel, I think I made it pretty clear <laughs> that uh, I uh, am brand loyal to Chanel and LV. Uh, but I'm especially fond of Chanel. I just find their styles and aesthetics and just overall fashion um, direction to be very much how I would like to dress uh, in terms of even ready to wear and uh, just their bags and accessories in general um, but I of course love LV too because I don't always dress girly and I don't always dress elegant all the time I may appear to be like so because that's when I tend to like to take my photographs but a lot of times I'm also quite casual and relaxed and just not with any care in the world like I just dress whatever way I want like I'm talking big hoodies and boots and like t-shirt and a simple blazer with jeans like I can be quite um, casual as well so LV for me is good for that because their canvas bags just goes with everything and sometimes you just need a good canvas bag because you just want it to be carefree and not having to worry and baby as much as you normally would with your more expensive leather bags. 
So having said that, basically explaining why, where my brand loyalty comes from, I would say that perhaps the biggest brand that I used to love so, so much, which is Coach, so Coach New York, at the time that was what I could afford. And I'm talking about in my early 20s, Coach bags even back then were not inexpensive. They were still in the... I want to say like for a proper bag in the $500 range up to like the $1000 range. They were not they were not necessarily inexpensive especially at the time I feel like with their quality being so much more, you know, about the leather and the 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 stitches they they just were excellent in that area. So ever since going my higher end luxury collection more, I have definitely fell out of love of coach more as well and there was also this period where their designs were just not as good they were doing a lot of their fabric bags just a lot of their monogram cc i have nothing against monogram to be honest but it was also during that period where they uh, started opening more of the outlet shops and just the quality of the outlet shop items were just subpar to their regular retail ones but because they look pretty much identical in a way like sometimes they, they look identical they may not feel identical but they may look identical I kind of fell out of love of the idea of luxury being associated with coach for, for, for a while I was feeling that way but now I feel like they are uh, coming back with their heritage leathers and everything I and I feel like their designs are more what I used to like so I am liking the brand a lot more again but I feel like it's definitely cyclical but also the fact that I have personal evolution I uh, not only have a greater appreciation for craftsmanship and history but also I uh, got to understand my personal aesthetics and Chanel I just really really personally associate and relate in terms of style so yeah, I would say that coach is the answer <laughs> just to a uh, long story short. That's pretty much um, one of the brands that I used to really, really adore. I had a pretty big collection and I think a lot of people went through pretty much around the same uh, experience, so to speak. The next question is by Ivy Huyen. Uh, thoughts on the new drawstring, drawstring bucket bag from uh, Chanel in Caviar. And then she absolutely loves mine. So I asked her which one it is. So she sent me a photo of the one that she was referring to. Mine is from the um, 19B collection. So last year's fall winter collection. Um, and it was the season where they came out with the soft caviar. So this is a soft matte caviar. And they also did this pleat here around the bag. The caviar itself is... A little bit on the thinner and lighter side which is also why the bottom feels a little bit more delicate um, not super structured basically the bag itself is structured but the bottom because they didn't really reinforce it it can still sag so I do recommend an organizer for this one anyway just to give you an idea of what this bag feels like and looks like I also have a review on this handbag so if you want to watch it I'm gonna link it down below and up here but basically bucket bags from Chanel are seasonal this was the particular one from the 19b collection from last year basically so the one this year is slightly different it is still caviar it looks like but the grain and the texture looks a little different also, I uh, just from comparing the two, I just prefer the design on this one. I just feel like the overall aesthetic, when you look at it, it just looks like a really cute, slightly rounded shape that still looks pretty structured. It doesn't look too scrunched up here uh, just because they only did four folds basically on the top and just the you know having these top handle feature and just the overall aesthetics i just really liked it when i saw it so i definitely jumped on it when i look at the one that you sent me i'll tell you what i like and don't like about it having this top handle is definitely a must for me it does look like it has a shoulder strap as well but the chains they look a little thicker it also is a matte vintage gold so Judging from the difference between this and this, I do prefer this one. I love that this one is shiny, light color gold. It just looks more wearable in a way. I know that they're both caviar, which is great, but what I like about this one is that 
is the cut basically it's just the overall design so when you look at this one versus this one the one that you have the top is really j like the real drawstring uh, style whereas this is still the drawstring bucket style but it only has four folds essentially and it it gives it that structure that cute rounded square structure it doesn't um, it cannot get more scrunched up on the top, which I really like about this. It, it's kind of prettier in a way. And also because this one does have this pleat here, which is the design that they had at that time, it gives it a lot more structure on the bottom as well. So I don't really feel like the parts here on the bottom, especially the corners, will crease too much, especially because I do have an organizer for this bag and I do recommend it for this bag, especially for the bottom. So because of the aesthetic design of this, I definitely prefer the one that I have. The one that you show me is still nice, but comparing the two, I still prefer mine. And um, if you like it enough because you like the look of this particular one and also the features, you're satisfied with it, then go ahead, go for it. Like I said, these are seasonal bags. Uh, they always will make a version of a bucket bag. I'm sure eventually there will be one that you are super attracted to that you feel compelled to buy and that you cannot pass up. <laughs> so definitely wait until a collection that you just can't simply stop thinking about because that's exactly what happened to me when I saw this. It was completely sold out in Canada. I had to go through a personal shopper who sourced it from the US for me and pay a premium, but it was worth it because when I, I saw it on videos, I saw it on Instagram, I just totally fell in love, knew that I had to have it in my collection. And that's how strong I felt about this bag. So when that happens, you're gonna know. If you have any sort of doubt, chances are you're not loving it 100% or even 99%. The next question is by Susie RSW, best day to night Chanel bag. Okay, so for me, a day to night bag can be so many bags because um, I'm very particular. I'm sure by now, if you do watch my channel often, you would know that I just love smaller size bags. Not only do they suit my body frame, they look cute. Uh, and I really just am quite a minimalist when it comes to packing. But I do understand that going from day to night depends on what that day is about too. Like if you have a, a pretty full day where you have to go to several different places or if you're on the road, like on a road trip, that's very different from being in your own city. And because of that, I'm not gonna choose my really mini bags. I'm actually gonna go for the more decent size one. But when we think about day to night, especially for evening, you don't want your bag to be too big as well. I would personally choose the trendy CC, which I still have the felt on because I always do and also the Chanel 19 and I might even choose the Chanel jumbo single flop depending on what kind of evening you have if it's more of a casual one I feel like the jumbo size is still really really pretty and just has this more casual cool girl vibe I love that mine is a single flap so that uh, it will fit a lot more and uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I will say about the jumbo flap. I think the classic flap is still a great day to night bag, even in the medium size, if you can, if you can manage to fit everything you need from day to night in that. But otherwise, I would really, really consider these two, especially in my own collection, just based on my own personal preference. I think I'm leaning more towards this one, just because I haven't had this long enough to know for sure whether I will completely favor this one more. So, you, know, you see where I'm coming from? So it's still too new to, to tell. Um, so let's talk about the Chanel 19 first and then I'll move on to the trendy. So the Chanel 19, I love it being a day to night bag. I know that it's not the traditional classic look. And sometimes I like that more than just the classic flat look all the time. I do love the idea of something classic and timeless, but there's something about being modern and just different that also appeals to me a lot. And obviously it just really depends on what I 
how I dress that day. Like, and it depends, like I said, day to night can be so different for everybody because it depends on what kind of day and night activities you have. So when we're talking about a bit more casual and laid back, this bag is just superb because not only does it fit a lot, even the small size fits a lot. And in the evening, you can easily tuck your chain in and just clutch it as a pillow or uh, like I said a million times, I just simply love this top handle. It's just my favorite feature of this bag. I just carry it like this, even with the chain dangling. And I just highly recommend the 19. I just don't think that it's going anywhere. I feel like it's so well made, especially if you get a good one. I know that it still varies from season to season, even though it is a permanent bag. So permanent meaning that they don't call these classics, they don't call them classic flaps, but they are permanent, meaning that they do come back every single season, sometimes in different colors, sometimes in seasonal colors, so you may be able to get something different than just black. Like I said earlier, it really just depends on what kind of day to night activities you have. If that day is a little bit more dressy and if you are just in general a more dressier person and you don't like the aesthetics of the 19, which I completely understand, then I feel like the, sh the trendy CC is just a great, great option. It is a little bit heavier of a handbag. I did a pretty good comparison review of this with the cocoa handle and I gave a lot of stats about this bag. So you could definitely watch that and get to know the, the trendy a little bit more to see if it fits you. But in terms of like general aesthetics, features such as having a top handle and just the quintessential Chanel look, you get that for the Chanel Trendy CC. It is lambskin though, and I feel like when you invest or when you decide to add a Chanel lambskin bag in your in your collection, especially if you're a little bit more on the uh, you know nervous side, you have to make the conscious conscious decision to accept that lambskin will have flaws. Flaws meaning not defects or anything like that. It just means that lambskin is a material that does patina. So it does age, it does crease. All these things are possible with lambskin. Uh, all, these, all these things will happen to lambskin. Of course, you can still have a beautiful lambskin bag in 10, 20 years. It will age beautifully if you take good care of it. Even with caviar, if you don't take good care of it, if you trash it, it's just gonna look like trash anyway. And I feel like lambskin, uh, based on what I hear and read, is that lambskin is more fixable rather than caviar. So in the long term, caviar can look exactly the same as when you bought it, if you take good care of it. Whereas with lambskin, it will have the patina look, vintage look, you can say. Um, still depends on how much you end up using it, but in general, that's what happens to lambskin. So it's something that you have to accept if you do want to consider a trendy CC. Uh, other than that, like I said, the classic flap, you really can't go wrong. Any size that fits you. I only have the jumbo single, so that's the one that I'm going to talk about, but yeah, those are the perfect day to night bags. And in fact, this <laughs> this one could also be a perfect day to night bag, except that this one is a seasonal one. So I didn't want to include it because you might not be able to get it. But in terms of the styles that you can always get, I feel like the trendy CC is a good option. The 19 is a good option. The classic flap obviously is a good option. The next question is by Kat. And I actually did answer it, but I just want to reiterate the question here. So if YouTube wasn't a thing. Would you? Would your collection be what it is? I know that mine won't be. What advice would you give your 20 year old self for luxury buying? And I made a whole video about that particular question. I centered it around that question and I kind of elaborated on it. I gave you guys five tips or five advice that I wish I knew about luxury buying. Without YouTube, either consuming YouTube or even producing content myself, um, it just, it won't look the same. I, we always get influenced no matter what. We always get influenced because we're people. So whether we get influenced by just our own entourage in the immediate vicinity or online, which is even worse, like worse in a sense that 
you have a lot of information, but you also know a lot more exists out there and you also get influenced on a much larger scale. So definitely the collection would be so, so much different if YouTube wasn't a thing. Um, it would be a lot smaller. Uh, that That's the only thing I'm going to say here. But uh, yeah, I totally made a whole video centered around this question, which you should watch. Okay, next question is by Niku b what was your first chanel bag oh my first chanel bag you guys don't know about at all because um well i kind of said it in a few maybe videos in passing i used to buy things based on passion based on feelings and based on what i see i like it then i buy it if i don't like it then i don't buy it basically that's how i used to buy things more more aesthetically and more by look and just what was presented to me what was available at the time whereas the way i shop now is still like that but it has a lot more thought and analytics involved meaning that i do way more research i obviously know a lot more about the subject as well because i'm so passionate about it that i have my own channel talking about it so not only do i have way more data research and just um, information sharing social media these are all places that i gather a lot of information and have to process to make my decisions anyway long story short is that my very first chanel bag was not influenced at all it was pretty much i walked into the chanel store i decided that day that i'm gonna buy my first chanel bag i had no idea what chanel bags i wanted because I, I really didn't. I, I literally did not even know the difference that there was the reissue and the classic flap being both classics of the house. And when I walked in, all I saw that I was automatically attracted to, I think at the time I was also more attracted to sort of more casual, grungier look because I always was dressing more cool, a bit more edgy at the time. So even the first Chanel bag that I bought kind of reflected that. So the first Chanel bought, so the first Chanel handbag that I bought when I walked in and the sales associate just showed me it and I just automatically liked it and bought it was the reissue, I know, in ruthenium hardware and it was in caviar skin black color. I know, if you haven't been buying Chanel for that long, you may not even know that the reissue came in caviar in 2009, I want to say. I think it was that year, or it's either 9 or 10 that it came out. And even though the reissue bag, so the 2.55 reissue flap, was a permanent classic style, the material at the time, so the caviar version at the time was seasonal and so it was this you know i think it was the 226 size so basically the medium size black caviar ruthenium hardware reissue handbag it was beautiful to me at the time obviously now it's not my style at all anymore i'm a little bit more girly slash elegant slash relaxed look like a little bit more grown up less edgy less teenage less trendy than before which is why when i saw this version from last year's metier da collection i really really fell in love with it because it kind of reminds me a little bit of you know it's edgy it's really out there in a way but it is made with gold hardware which turns it up a notch in terms of dressability like not elegant but like just a little bit more dressier so it's still cool and hip and everything but it's still dressy in a way so yeah n now i totally prefer it in the distressed calf skin if, if i were to choose another one for example and i actually really like the mini size um but yeah that's besides the question so yeah that was my very first chanel bag and after that i guess i didn't buy a chanel bag until i bought my jumbo which is pre-loved and um yeah that was when i started doing more research was you know after i think at the time it was after i was after my first mini but it was impossible to get at the same time jumbo flap especially the single flap was kind of the rage at the time in 2015 16 so 
yeah, pretty much five years later, that's uh, the one that I got, the jumbo fluff. The next question is by Michelle Windy, which is your favorite non-Chanel LV bag? In my collection, I have mostly Chanel's and LV's. I have a couple of Valentino's, a couple of Fendi's, and this. And the reason why I chose this is because even though I haven't really used this bag, it's just such a special purchase. It's a bag that I have had in my wish list for so many years, several years in a row. Essentially, this is a bag that will forever be a celebration. Um, I guess it's more of a passion purchase for, for, for sure because um, the Lady Dior is a classic, obviously, but it is also known to be not keeping its value very well. Dior is just a lot of history as well. It's just another one of those power luxury houses that um, is a must own in a way if you well, if you love the aesthetics um, it's just one of those beautiful bags that i cannot wait to use the next question is by lynn t p l l chanel gabrielle small or the small coco handle they are so very different by the way i don't really know why you're considering these two styles together unless you're just trying to figure out which one you should buy first it so depends on your collection, which is why um, I'm gonna break it down for you. Chanel Gabrielle feels more of an everyday bag to me, not only in terms of looks, but also in terms of how you can get in and out of it so much more easily. It's, you know, a zippered top, uh, but the opening is quite wide, so it's almost like at a glance, especially the size, which you are considering. This one just takes an extra step to get in and out of it a bit just because not only is it a flap style, and usually flap styles are pretty easy to get in, but because this is a tapered flap style, so the opening is a, it's just slightly smaller and it's slightly tighter. Um, by no means very difficult to get in, but just an extra sort of mental step to get into the cocoa handle is just slightly more cumbersome this one is kind of like brainless you just get in and out of it in a way um so in terms of more everyday use practicality wise i would say gabrielle and also the style itself is just a little bit more casual and i want to say that most people dress more casual nowadays rather than more you know rather than more put together i feel like it's modern society trend to dress more casual anyway so I feel like this is just a little bit more easy as an everyday bag or as a, day, a bag that you would find more practical and just reach more on on a regular basis but it still depends on your personality if you're just someone who loves to be more dressy and be more dressed up then I feel like the cocoa handle is a great great bag as well they're both very similar in in what you can fit inside so content wise it's, it's so similar but just getting in and out of it and just the, the way you treat the bag you know this one being more ladylike has a top handle uh, chances are you're gonna just wear it on the shoulder because crossbody is just too short for this size so I would say yeah aesthetic wise more ladylike more put together just a bit more conscious getting in and out of it and just a little bit more dressier so between the two bags, if I were to look for a bag that I just wanted to be a small bag that I can get in and out easy, get in and out of it easy and just be able to dress it down most of the time, then I would go for the Gabrielle because it is such a good bag for that reason. And the look itself is just so cool, right? Um, again, both of these bags I have videos on, which lots of videos on you can watch. Uh, in more detailed review whereas if I was after the cocoa handle it would be for a particular reason is either I really loved the color of that season or I just feel like having a really girly bag in my collection which you know I, I kind of bought three cocoa handles in a row in a way and I think I was just crazy about the idea of the cocoa handles being so cute and the colors at the time I bought the blue one first which was not my first choice of color, but now I love it. And then I got the gray one, which is my favorite one, but I I don't know, for whatever reason, after that, I felt like I needed a black just to complete it, which is why I bought this one. But this one is actually, 
like if I were to chop any of them, it would be the black one just because I really did not need it. I did not need another duplicate of the same bag. So um, yeah, that's why I bought it at the same at the time, even though that's not your question, but I just wanted to share my thought process as to why I ended up with three. It's not because I love the style so, so much that I needed to get three. Of course, I love the style, but it's also because of the circumstance at the time. I just felt at the time I needed to complete it with a dark, darker color. Um, black is usually a really good color to go for, which it is, because if I were to sell this, it's, it's probably going to sell quite easy as well. But if I were to be really honest with myself between these two styles, I really much prefer the Gabrielle myself. I just get to reach for this one way more. The last two questions, I'm going to combine them together, is by Mini Footprints, a video to tell us more about you. And also, Pearly was asking, do you plan to have kids? It's not that I don't want to share more about myself uh, with you, per se, because people that know me, people that are closest to me, will know a lot more about me and will also get to know more about me that they understand when not to dig. <laughs> Let me explain. I'm a pretty private person. Like I am almost secretive in a way, like not secretive in a, in a malicious manner. Like I just sometimes like to keep to myself. There are things that when I'm ready to share, I will share. And there are things that if I'm so passionate about, like if I'm passionate about enough that I feel like everybody needs to know, then I will talk about it a lot. You will, you will find me very social, but people, so people that know me, know me as someone who is very social when I know them well, but that I can be so quiet and almost appear aloof if you don't know me very well and if I don't uh, particularly have anything to contribute. When it comes to really personal life, that's where I, I, I either have this fear of vulnerability, which some people don't have any sort of wall, right? They just not only are very transparent, but they don't mind sharing. And I, that's a personality thing for me to divulge too much is not something that I feel comfortable with. Of course, it has a lot to do with insecurities too. Of course, I have insecurities just like everyone else, but I just don't share them necessarily. Um, I share some of them. I just don't share everything. And you also have to understand that being on this very public platform, sharing too much, especially very sensitive data is really not a good idea, which is also why that I never show any, um, I don't really share any names of family members, kids. Uh, by the way, I do have a, I do have a stepdaughter. She's a teenage now. And, um, yeah. So that question about whether I plan to have kids, no, because I already have one. But of course, I know where you're coming from. Uh, you probably just want to get to know me more so that you can get to maybe connect with me on a deeper level, which is totally understandable because human beings are all about connections. But in a way, um, I have shared a lot about myself over the years, but just not in a particular video. And I feel like you get to know about me just through my responses and thought process anyway. But yeah, in case you're brand new and you just didn't maybe see some of the videos where I talked about myself and uh, where I shared about, you know, my background. Well, in case you don't know, I guess I'm just going to give you a brief summary. What I can tell you is that I uh, was born and raised in Canada. My parents are um, from Hong Kong and they both immigrated. Well, my dad was here before, but uh, when my parents got married, then they immigrated to Canada. I also have two other siblings. They're both 
younger than me and I have basically two brothers uh, that actually even though they're younger than me we are very very close in age between me and my youngest brother we're less than three years apart so we're basically the same age I come from a very humble family very humble background um, at times I would even describe our uh, upbringing to be a very not just humble but uh, very difficult I had to grow up pretty fast with a traumatic upbringing I, I, I don't want to be dramatic that's why I don't like to talk about myself because it's so selfish but but I, I understand from, from the point of view of you wanting to know more and connecting more but you know I, I know everyone has their challenges even like childhood trauma is a real thing right I don't want to compare, I, I'm not ever going to compare traumas because that's so wrong to do, but um, I haven't had the most easy childhood growing up and it has, um, it has a lot to do, I want to say, with uh, family dynamics. So my mom and dad don't have the best relationship, mainly due to addiction. Um, and that's where I'm gonna stop because I don't wanna I want I don't wanna bad mouth my parents. <laughs> my dad is the one who has issues and of course anybody in a family member, I'm sure you can relate, if you have any family member that has issues, whether it's mental issues or or health issues or or addiction related or financially related, which actually it, the addiction caused the financial challenges in my family you would understand that how much it affects the family dynamic not only does it affect the relationship so not only does it affect my mom therefore her relationship with us and just the whole family dynamics is so strange um it's been it's been a whirlwind and it's it's still it, it's good now but it we're still learning um still learning to communicate and to um, it's not just about acceptance too because the addiction is not gone yet but anyway I don't want to get into it too much because I uh, just wanted to explain the background in a way which also leads me to my personal my personality I'm a very driven person but I can also be very emotional and secretive because of that uh, traumas are not, never easy to share. I don't really want to share them per se in a way, but it does it does give you a choice essentially. Challenges in life either makes you sink and just keep on sinking uh, or it can drive you and make you want a different life for yourself. So I was kind of the latter one. I knew exactly what I wanted my life not to be and instead how I wanted it to be. I sort of achieved whatever I could um, in a way that I, you know, I got my education, I worked my ass off, I paid for my own education, I um, try to get away from the family dramas too much by becoming independent at an early age and it's not the journey is not over yet and unfortunately I think I also shared on my channel at one point when I created a channel intro was that I became ill when I turned 20 I want to say 20 I was actually 20 it was like tail end of my 27 well maybe not 12 tail end it was like mid 27 I literally one day just became very ill. I had this inflammation all over my body that I felt mostly on, actually everywhere, on every joint of my body, but it was very, very prominent on the shoulder, on the knees and on the ankles to the point where I could not even put my shoes on because my feet were so inflamed. My fingers were sausage fingers and it kind of almost happened overnight but the symptoms actually was progressive. I, I had a little bit of hip pain on, on uh, I think a few months before that. I, I didn't know why. I just, in general, have this feeling of unwell. 
and I, I just didn't know where it came from and it, it just over time manifested it and one day I just literally woke up with inflammation on my body and I, it, it actually happened at the worst time too I was traveling I was in Japan uh, it was really cold at the time I'm someone who gets cold naturally so on, on top of being inflamed I was also very frail very uh, lethargic very fatigued, a uh, very cold, and um, yeah, that happened in 2008. I was diagnosed with lupus about, I want to say like six months later, officially diagnosed because lupus is a disease that's very, very hard to diagnose, and it's a inflammatory disease, immune related disease. So basically it's your own immune system fighting its own cells, its own healthy cells. And uh, there's really no cure, but um, you know, you manage it by changing your lifestyle, by uh, there's a lot of things that I did to lead to today is as in like, it's manageable now. And it's, I guess I'm, the healthiest that I've been since I got sick. It's also an invisible disease. I'm sure those of you who have family members or even yourself who have um, any sort of health related issues would really relate as to um, managing health challenges and lifelong chronic diseases are very, very difficult. So anyway, <laughs> that's just, uh, for someone who doesn't share a lot, I just shared a lot. But basically, yeah, I um, uh, had to overcome uh, not only just, you know, the the struggles of having to grow up fast when I was younger, but I also uh, am in a way overcoming health challenges and still is because it's chronic, meaning that it stays with me for life. And you just make the best out of it. And I guess, yeah, that's me and a gist um if if you wanted to know about my upbringing but yeah i guess that's what i'm gonna share about me today i don't know what else i can share about me because um i mean i i said that i am an it professional already uh, so that's my profession and um what else do you need to know about me i'm trilingual because i speak uh, well english obviously you know I'm actually fluent in French and Cantonese. I can also get by with Mandarin. Um, what else? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna share with about me. I'm not gonna share anything that's related to my immediate family, uh, like my husband and like what they do. And I like, I'm not gonna share those just cause I really do value their privacy, which is why I never really talk about them. Even if I vlog and they sometimes appear in my vlogs, I don't really talk about who they are. I don't really say who, what their names are. So not only do I value their privacy, but I also ask you to respect it as well, which is why I don't really talk about them, uh, which is, I think, completely normal. I mean, in a way, I'm just the, the girl next door as well. So uh, we, we are online virtual buddies in a way, but um, with online, you also know that there is a lot of um, not so normal people out there. So you have to be careful. So that's all I'm gonna share for today. Plus you didn't really elaborate how, like which aspect of me that you wanted to know more, but um, I think that's a pretty good start, isn't it? And plus, um, like I said, it's just it's just selfish to talk about yourself too much. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's just it's just me. And also, I uh, feel like um, that's a pretty good start. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this personal Q and A. That you had a good time listening to this video. Hopefully, doing your chores. Hopefully that it killed some of your time for you thank you so much for watching again if you're new please don't forget to subscribe because i would love to have you back on uh, my amy's army family thank you so much have a great day and i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye